So Apple introduced widgets under our home screen back with iOS 14. So it's been about five years since we've been able to try hundreds of different widgets from productivity ones to aesthetic focus ones to for fun ones and everything in between. So in this video, what I wanna do is talk about my top 10 favorite widgets that I would recommend to pretty much anyone in any situation, some that I've been living on my home screen for years, some that I interchange depending on what I'm going through. So without further ado, let's talk about the best iOS 18 widgets before WWDC. Let's get into it. So before we do jump in, I'm gonna answer the question that yes, all these widgets have an iPad OS and even a Mac OS counterpart because remember that we can put widgets all over Mac OS now as well as iPad OS, so that's always good to know. And then secondly, I avoided applications and widgets like Widgetsmith because that's more so an open canvas for creativity for anybody to jump in and kind of create their own clocks and calendars and aesthetic colors and things of that nature. So I wanted to focus on widgets that were specific to applications that had some sort of purpose, whether it was for fun or pleasure or again, productivity. So now let's get into the first one, which is a crowd favorite, Carrot Weather. All right, so let's pull up the iPhone right here and we're gonna start off with my home screen because these are the widgets that are always on here. And of course, when I open up my phone, that's what we see. So the first one on top is going to be that medium size widget. And I will mention that most of the widgets that I have here have multiple sizes and multiple options. So we'll go through the carousel on how to add these and depending on which ones you want, you'll be able to add them to fit your home screen setup. So of course for me, the weather one is gonna be the most important one. And I've always been looking for other weather applications that aren't just a static weather app from Apple because if I do this, I do have my smart stack here showing that I have the regular weather app from Apple, which again, gives you all the information that you would need but I like to use Carrot Weather more often because A, it's a lot more customizable in terms of the number of widgets that you have, the look that you have, the aesthetic that you have, the type of information you can get. So if I long press on here, we're gonna edit the Carrot widget. You have the ability to change your background, show the location, show what it feels like, show every other hour, and then also precipitation chance as well as adding none on there. But if I wanna do the background, I can change it to red if I want to, and then you'll see that in the background, it will look red and it's gonna have this nice hue to it, and it'll change the corresponding outline of all the different you know, clouds and graphics and things like that. But you can see that I'm in my city on the top left, the high and the low on the top right, the hour by hour, or at least the every other hour, in terms of what the type of weather is gonna be, and also cloud cover, the sun, and everything that you would need to know from a weather standpoint at a glance, which I love. But to see what it looks like also, we'll go into the edit, we'll add widgets, we'll go into carrot weather down here, you have the single and the double for snark and snark basically allows it to give you different i guess mottos or different quotes on here so here it says i bought i brought out the sun so i could blind you with it and what's cool about carrot weather is that you can make it be as crude as you want or as nice as you want in terms of what it shows you and what it gives you but as you can see this is a larger version of it it's very familiar to the weather application but overall it just gives you a little bit more options and you can even show off the entire weather map and the precipitation map which is cool to see so that's going to be my weather app of choice my weather widget of choice carrot weather and then when it comes to the smart stack that i have on my home screen i'm just gonna fly through these because these are very specific to me but i have my tesla app right here i have my fitness widget right here to make sure that i'm closing all my rings i know that i can see it on my watch but i like to be able to glance at it also here which is great to see and then i have my battery widget which to me is probably the most important widget on my home screen because again it gives me the battery of my apple watch my airpods both individual airpods as well as my phone and then if you have a magsafe compatible case if i slap it on here It'll also pop up on there as well as any other Bluetooth devices that I have. So as you can see, I slapped the case on there and now the widget is appearing and the amount of battery that I have on that case is there as well. So those are my main ones that I have on my home screen. But now let's go into my widget home screen, which shows you all the different ones that I use on a daily basis. So of course, we already went over the carrot widget. That's just there for thumbnail purposes. So if we go into the middle left square, that's going to be my ultra human sleep index. So I use the ultra human ring. That's the one that I've been using as of now. I'm also testing one by Renfo, but I'll have a future video comparing my favorite wellness ring overall. So if you guys are into that kind of content, definitely leave a comment or a like down below. But this gives me just a glanceable look of how I slept the night before. I can tap in here to go into the application itself. So you can see that I have my sleep score of 84 right there and I can keep going through here. But for me, the most important thing is just gonna be being able to glance and see how my sleep was like the night before, right when I wake up, as opposed to going into the application, letting it load up and seeing what's going on there. So again, just information at a glance when it comes to my ultra human ring, because I love the ultra human ring or at least the ring form factor for overall wellness and then the Apple Watch for actual working out. And then next to it, I actually have my ChatGPT application. I'm a huge user of ChatGPT for everything, right? For personal use, for personal finance, for work, for 
planning my life, asking you questions. It has replaced Google, it has replaced Siri for me. I even have it mapped as my action button. So that's always good to see. But here it just gives you three quick access buttons to be able to access ChatGPT. So the top one will go right into ChatGPT and open up a brand new prompt window. The other one will open up a new window as well, but it'll open it up with the camera opened up as you can see there. And then last but not least, you open up this one right here, which is going to be the voice assistant. Let's see, and hopefully it still allows you to screen record. But as you can see, you let it load, the voice assistant begins to load, and then voila, there you have the voice assistant going, saying, hey, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great, thanks for asking. How about you? So again, just simple, quick action buttons for ChatGPT, and if you use a larger one, so if I go into wiggle mode, we'll edit, we'll add widget, and if we go down to ChatGPT again, these are the different sizes that you have. So you're able to add a couple more shortcuts, so you have the microphone as well, and then also just your image gallery if you wanna quickly upload images. So those are the two that you get with ChatGPT. And again, I use it all the time. I have a Gronk vs. Gemini vs. Siri uh, compilation coming up soon, so definitely stay tuned for that. The next one is gonna be food noms. So again, if you're into nutrition, if you're into counting your macros and your calories, this is a good option. There's a bunch of different applications now. Of course, My Fitness Pal is the OG one. You also have a bunch of other ones that are on there, but this one I just like because of the widget implementation. So you can see here that it gives you a live feed of how much you've eaten throughout the day. Right now I'm fasted, so it's not there yet. But if I click in here, you get to then go into the application itself and you're able to see how many calories you have remaining, how much protein you have remaining. And then if you pay for the entire app, you can get the other things that saturated fat, sodium, and also your fasting. So fasting is able to allow you to, again, decide when you're going to start eating. But there are other individual applications or timers, or you can just look at the clock. That's normally what I do. Around 12 or 1 is when I break my fast. But for right now, I would just like to be able to get my total calories as well as my protein intake at a glance. And that's what this one allows you to do. And if I long press on here, you do have the ability to make a smaller one if I want to. So it'll make it smaller and it'll give you the, a different kind of look to it. And then of course, if I long press on here again, I can make it bigger. Then it goes back to that medium size. And that's a little tip for you guys. If you long press on each individual widget, it'll allow you to dynamically change the size of it if there is a supported widget size for that widget. So this next section is all for things that I use maybe not every day, but at least once a week or, you know, maybe only once a day as opposed to multiple times a day. The first one's going to be my GoView widget. I use a small one and it basically just lets me control this light panel back here. So if I tap on here, I can just press off. It should turn it off. As you can see, there it goes. And if I turn it back on, it should pop up behind me again, which it absolutely did. And then I can jump in here and actually go into all the different application stuff. So again, GoV is just a smart lighting brand that I use a lot. I have a couple other products that I plan on opening up soon and reviewing, so definitely stay tuned for that. But I love this kind of light panel. The pixel lights, they're awesome. So next up is gonna be the card pointers widget. And I just enlarged it here so you guys can get a better view of what it looks like. But card pointers is basically a way to input all of your credit cards. And if you're in the points and miles game, then you know that each credit card has different spend categories to really optimize how you're earning your points back. So for instance here, what I like about this is that it allows you to kind of get all the guessing out of it and you don't have to memorize anything. So for instance, these are all different categories on the top of the screen. This top left is for a drugstore, meaning that if I tap on there, it'll let me know that, hey, your Chase Freedom Unlimited gets 3% back at drugstores, so you should use that one. If, for instance, I'm going out to buying some sort of airline ticket, I tap on the airline one, and then it lets me know that, hey, my Chase Sapphire Reserve has $300 credits towards any airline or any transportation, so on and so forth. So if I tap on here, which is going to be YouTube TV, or again, something from a streaming services standpoint, it says use the Chase Inc. Business Unlimited, because I get 1.5x back. So again, just an easy way to really, instead of having to memorize what each one of your cards do, especially if you have more than two, three, four, five credit cards, it starts to add up and get a little confusing. Card pointers is a great way to simplify that life and be able to maximize your spend wherever you are. So card pointers, if you're in the credit card miles and points game, highly recommend. And then kind of in that same light from a kind of finance budgeting standpoint, I recently reviewed this app called Big Numbers on 9to5mac.com. So if you guys wanna see that, I'll leave a link down below, but it's very simple. It's three different numbers, basically how much you spent on one day, how much you spent in the last week, and how much you spent in the last month. Now, Big Numbers has the same exact widgets. You have a widget for each one. So if I long press on here, we'll edit, we'll add widget. We'll go down to Big Numbers. And you can see that you have your daily spending, your weekly spending, and then your monthly spending. So every single time a transaction happens with a certain credit card, it'll let you know like, hey, you spent that money on a day, on a weekly and a monthly basis. So it's a very simple app, very easy to use. And then of course you can tap in here, it'll load up and then you can see that, hey, you haven't spent anything in a day, you spent that much in a week and you spent that much in a total month. And then when it comes to time period calculation, you can do rolling periods or you can do fixed periods. So if you only wanna know how much you spent in May, you can start from May 1st, or if you wanna know how much you spent in the last 30 days, you can do that as well. So very simple, 
has a couple settings. Highly recommend trying it. I believe it is free for a certain amount of time, but I'll leave everything linked down below from all these widgets. And then to kind of round things off here, some more reminder friendly applications. So the first one's going to be the day before, and it's basically a countdown timer, right? So every single time you input something, it'll give you the most recent countdown that's coming up soon. So you can see here that I have my mom's birthday, it's in three days. And then if I tap in here, it'll give you a little bit of a look so you can style your own widget and things like that. And it'll even let you know how old they're turning. You can go back, you can categorize. I have another birthday right here. So after this one ends, then this one will take over as the next kind of important countdown for me to look forward to when it comes to this countdown widget. And then the last one that I have been using more and more recently because it's so easy to use and it makes things obvious, especially if you're a forgetful person like I am, it's gonna be the sticky widget. It's very simple. You can add as many of these as you want all over your home screens, all over your iOS devices. It probably works a little bit better, honestly, on iPad OS just because you have more screen real estate. But again, here it says I have to remind myself to get Archie's medicine, who's my dog. And it allows you to just add as many sticky notes as you want. So here we're gonna add a new sticky note to say, remember to edit the video, we'll press done. We'll press done again. And you can see that I have a couple sticky notes here. We'll swipe up. We'll long press here. We will edit the widget. We'll choose. We'll do this one. And then you can see that it's on there. So I'll never forget that I have to remember to edit the video. So those are my favorite widgets. I probably went over 10 to 12 different ones for you guys to check out. They'll all be linked down below if you guys do want to try them out. Overall, they're just kind of more so for myself, for my sanity to get information at a glance, to be able to remind myself to do things. And that's what widgets to me are. They're there to help you out and give you a little bit of a boost whenever it comes to maybe creating a countdown or creating a streak or making sure you're on your macros or making sure you slept well or making sure you're dressed correctly to go outside without having to go into the applications and kind of get distracted with everything that they have. So for me, these widgets are tools that I look at to get information. But let me know in the comment down below what you think. Let's finish up the video. So let's just about do it for this video, everybody. As you saw, there's plenty of widgets for anybody to kind of put into any situation, whether it is your iOS, iPadOS, or macOS home screens. And again, they all serve different purposes. I like mine for productivity, for information at a glance, to be able to track a lot of my macros when it comes to nutrition and weight and be able to track my wellness. But some people like to go the other route and just have for fun ones or for pleasure ones or have a kind of like a Neopet style thing that you have to take care of over time to kind of help out with streaks and stuff like that. So let me know in the comment down below what your favorite widget is from this video or maybe a widget that you use that I didn't mention and I would love to check it out for maybe a part two once iOS 19 does get announced in less than a month. But again, if you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you guys want to watch more videos like this one, definitely check out one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everybody.